Hello, this is Dr. Ahmed Aswan again from University of Sharjah College of Medicine. And now we're going to proceed with the hip examination. So again, first of all, I will introduce myself. So good morning, sir. Mm -hmm. My name is Dr. Ahmed. I was instructed by my senior doctor to examine your hips today. Is that fine with you? I would like to assure you that everything will be confidential between you, me, and my senior doctor. Do you feel the place is private enough? Okay. Uh, the examination is going to include me uh, looking at your uh, hip joints, going to do certain movements. Is that fine with you, sir? Okay. Thank you very much. So once the patient now gives me the consent, I would do the three uh, steps as we agreed upon. The first step is washing the hands. After I wash my hands, I should put the patient in the proper exposure and positioning. So, uh, sir, the proper exposure is I, the patient has to be in the underpants, and the positioning, of course, it's, gone, it's going to be lying supine for the most of the examination, but for certain parts, I will ask the patient to uh, stand uh, as I'm going to inspect, okay? So, first of all, I will start with the inspection. So, as usual, I will start the inspection with the general look. So, I will face the patient, and the patient looks well. He's not in acute distress. So now I'm going to inspect the hip joint in two positions, while the patient is standing and walking, and the second position while the patient is lying down or lying supine. So first of all, I would ask, I would like to ask the patient to walk. Can you please uh, walk? Now, while the patient is walking, I should comment on the symmetry of the gait. If the patient has any limping, can you come back, please? So notice the, the patient's gait, and if he has any limping, any gait abnormality, then I would ask the patient to, please, can you lie down? Now, once the patient lies down or lies supine, then I would inspect the hip joint from two positions. I would go first at the edge of the bed, then I, I should go from next to the patient's joint, okay? Now, what should I comment on? Of course, I have to comment about the position, the symmetry of, of these two joints. Now, uh, is there any obvious asymmetry between the joints? Again, we remember the composition of the joints. So bones, muscles, and skin. So any bony deformities, obvious bony deformities, like fractures, dislocations, any obvious muscular deformity, like wasting or uh, atrophy, hypertrophy. Then finally, I'm going to inspect, of course, the skin above the joint for signs of inflammation, like redness, swelling, for scars that may indicate previous surgeries, for creases that may indicate previous uh, traumas. Then, uh, after the inspection, of course, in the inspection, I have to compare both sides. And since we're talking about both sides, I should ask the patient, actually, which side is affected. So if the patient has pain in the left side or a complaint on the left side, then, again, as usual, I should start with the normal side, then compare with the affected side. So uh, let's assume that the patient is having a problem or pain on the left side. So I'm going to inspect and compare the right side first, then compare it with the left side, which is the affected one. So after the inspection, after the look, I have then the feel. So the feel, we're used to the main points, which are the bony prominences, the muscles, temperature, and distal pulsations. Now, to start with the bony prominences, actually we have only two. The first one is the anterior superior iliac spine. So, this is the anterior superior iliac spine. And on the side here, we have the greater trochanter of the femur. So, actually, we're, I'm going to palpate these two bony prominences, and I'm going to ask the patient if he has any pain or tenderness. Do you have any pain, sir? Okay. So this is number one. Number two, I will put my thumb and index finger on the right side, the normal one, and on the affected side. Okay. Then I'm going to compare the relationship between the anterior superior iliac spine and the greater trochanter on both sides. Of course, any difference between these uh, relationships actually may might indicate a bony deformity. So the bony landmarks, then actually I'm going to uh, do the temperature. Of course, the temperature as we're used to, with the dorsum of our hands, both sides simultaneously, I would 
do it once below the joint, once on the joint, and one above the joint. Then I would compare and say if there is any difference in the temperature. So actually here we, we do not have any temperature discrepancy. Now if it's increase or decrease on one side, then usually the warmer side, maybe it has, uh, this is one of the cardinal signs of inflammation. Now next is the uh, distal pulsations. Now the distal pulsations, I'm going to mention examination or palpation of the femoral artery. Then I should do and palpate the uh, dorsal spedis artery. Of course, the dorsal spedis artery is located just lateral to the extensor hallucis longus. So I'm going to place my hands here and I can feel the pulsation. So actually the only comment I should give is, is it patent? Is it present or absent? Because what I'm looking for again is the patency of the artery. So this was for the uh, palpation. Now I, I would like to remind you please that with each musculoskeletal examination, when, whenever we finish each section, I have to, get, to go and compare it with the affected side. So I did the palpation for the normal side, then I have to go and compare it with the affected side. Similarly will be for the movements, similarly will be for the special tests. Okay. So starting with the inspection, of course inspection is done bilaterally, then the look, the, the feel, move, special test again, do it for the normal side, then do it for the abnormal side, and then compare both sides. Uh, now next is the movement. Of course the movements of the hip joint is done only passively. So the patient will not do any movement by himself, so no active movement, it's only a passive movement. So what are the movements we have? The movements is, number one is the flexion. So the flexion, I will flex the knee joint of the patient, then I will flex the hip like this. Okay? So this would be the flexion. Then the internal and external rotation. Now the internal and external rotation is simply I will flex the knee into 90 degrees and I will hold it like this. Okay. So this will be external rotation and this will be internal rotation. Of course keep in mind that I'm not concerned with the direction of the foot or the direction of the knee. Okay. So please take a look at what's happening at the hip joint. Okay. So this is external rotation and this is internal rotation. Now the next movement is, or the two movements, are the adduction and abduction. So for adduction abduction, I would stabilize the other hip of the patient. Then I will hold the uh, patient's lower limb just proximal to the ankle joint. Then I will do abduction, then adduction. Now in adduction, the knee has to reach above the uh, other patient's limb. Okay. So again, hold it, stabilize the other hip, abduction, then adduction. So now I've done flexion, uh, flexion, internal external rotation, and adduction and abduction. Now the last one, or the last movement, would be the extension. Of course, the extension has to be while the patient is in the prone position. So can you please uh, lie down on your belly? OK. So for the uh, extension, I will flex the knee, then I will extend the hip like this. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. So now I'm done with all the movements. Of course, what is the command I should give? The command is normal range of motion. Okay. So whenever we comment about movements, we should remember that the range of the range of movement is normal and there is no limitation or restriction to movement. Okay. Now the final part would be the special tests. Now, the special tests of the hip will be including, the first uh, test would be measuring the apparent and true length. So how can we do this? Now, what is the apparent length? The apparent length is simply the distance between the umbilicus and the medial malleolus. So this is the umbilicus, and this is the medial malleolus. So on this side, it's 100 centimeters. And on the other side, this is, again, another 100 centimeters. Now the true length actually is from the anterior superior iliac spine to the medial malleolus, which is on this side 95, and on the left side 
which is again 95. Now, how can this help us actually? If there is a discrepancy in the uh, apparent length, uh, this might indicate uh, certain pathologies, okay? Indicate, including hip pathologies and spine pathologies. But actually, to make sure that the pathology is from the hip joint, we measure the true length, which is from the anterior superior iliac spine to the medial malleolus. Now, if there is a difference or discrepancy in the true length, then that means that the actual pathology is in the hip joint, not actually in the, in the back. Now, the second test is I'm going to perform is Thomas test. Now, Thomas test, this is a test we call it for fixed flexion deformity. So what I'm going to do is I will flex for the right, the right side, I will flex the hip and the knee joint. Then I would place my non-dominant hand below the patient to make sure to uh, uh, exclude or uh, to exclude, yes, the lumbar lordosis. Okay? So I will put my hand just below the patient on the lumbar spine. Then I will flex the knee and hip. Now what happened here, actually, when you do flexion of the knee and hip, the lumbar lordosis will be now straightened. Okay? Now, uh, some patients who have fixed flexion deformity, the positive sign will be when you do the flexion of the knee and hip, the other side, the other hip will flex involuntarily, okay? Because they have a pathology called fixed flexion deformity. Okay? So actually when I did this, I was testing the left hip. And if I do like this, then I'm testing actually the right hip, okay? Now, the last test is, the last special test would be, can you please sir, stand up? It's called Fredenberg test. So this test actually is uh, for the proximal muscles of the hip, especially the abductors. So what I'm going to do is I will ask the patient to stand on one leg. Of course, I, I should be supporting the patient. So can you please stand like that? That's fine. That's fine. You can face. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Raise one leg, please. Yes. Okay. I'm supporting the patient. And now other one, the other one. That's fine, thank you. The other leg, yes. Thank you very much. Okay. So simply actually this test, uh, if the patient actually falls on one side while he's raising his leg, it means that the abductor muscles on the other side is affected. So if I raise my right leg, then I fall on the right side, of course, then that means that my left hip abductors are affected okay, or weakened. Sit down. Now, uh, this is concluding the hip examination, but of course, we don't forget that uh, whenever we finish a musculoskeletal examination, we have to mention that we have to examine one joint above. In this case, this is the thoracolumbar spine, and one joint below, which is the knee. This is, of course, to exclude any referred pain. At the end, I would like to thank my patient. Thank you very much, sir. I would be conveying this, these uh, findings to my senior doctor and we'll come back to you. Okay. Thank you very much.